everyone. So in this video, we will cover the following learning objectives. These are modeling approaches to complex parts, advanced sketching commands, advanced feature commands, and mass properties as well as center of mass. So you have been provided with a drawing that contains all the dimensions to draw the specific complex part. Now what I would suggest you is that as you go through your own drawing, you cross out all the dimensions you use. This is important specifically for a detailed drawing such as this because you don't want to miss out on any dis dimension. That could make a huge difference to what your final part should look like. So how we evaluate parts is mostly by going under evaluate toolbar and checking the mass properties. So your mass, your volume, your surface area depends on how the dimensions are, how your part is drawn, and the material used. Your center of mass is more dependent on the origin and it, it impacts how you place assemblies mostly. So in this case we will, mo we will use our mass. Your center of mass is important because if you draw it exactly how I will show you, it, from the origin, the center of mass should also be the same but our main focus would be on the mass. So when you draw complex parts such as the one in front of you, what we look for is your most descriptive profile. So in this case you would notice that this here is would be your most descriptive view. We will begin our part by keeping this view in mind because it contains all the features that we need, all the various features that we would use. There are all, there's also a lot of approaches that you could do to create this part but the steps we will show you would be the best practices so we will begin by creating a new metric part the first step will be to create a sketch we will choose a right plane and create a rectangle we will dimension this to be 63 and 100 Again, make sure all your dimensions are off your sketches. So later on, if you need to review your part, you don't have to go through each feature just to see what the basic sketch was. So we are looking for an extrude bar space. That's 50 millimeters. Make sure the direction is this one. If your direction is different, you can always reverse it. So this is important and for our center of mass, of course. Except that. Now, if your bar here, if you can't see the views toolbar, you can right click it and look for standard views. Why I would suggest that is because we will use the views very frequently in our two videos. So we're looking for a right view to begin the part. Select this and create a new sketch. So what we will sketch is a tangent arc. So we'll begin by that and under here we look for a tangent arc complete that make sure your angle says 90 you can see that says 90 right there so we accept that and we will complete our part okay now before you move further if you see here your tangent arc is still not fixed well the center point isn't so we can hold down control select this entity select this line and look for a coincident relationship now we will dimension this this should be a radius of 30 and the distance from the center of the arc to the base should be 35. Once we've created that, we will look for an extrude cut. Go for an isometric view to better see what's going on. And we are looking for offset. Okay, over here, enter 8 millimeters. So, if you notice the sketch, the diagram you've been provided, you would see that there is a distance of 8 millimeters. Then we have this cut here. Now, that 8 millimeter is what we would call an offset distance here. Offset basically moves that particular distance from one of the sides. Now, we are looking for it to be from this side, so we will accept that. Now, we, will, we can also evaluate this distance by going under Evaluate Measure, and we will look for the Measure Toolbar, and click that edge. That's 8 millimeters. In case it says in inches, you can always go here and click this button. And under Custom Settings, you can select whatever unit you're looking for. In most cases you would be on document settings. Now this depends on what you select here, IPS, MMGS, or CGS. So we will click OK, escape out of it. Now we'll go back to completing our part. Once again we would ask for a right view. Select this, begin a new sketch, make a corner rectangle from here, dimension this, Again, make sure all the dimensions you place are off the sketches. This should be 40. 
Once again, we will look for an extrude cut, isometric view for a better look at it, and make sure it's through all, except that. Okay. Now we will go for a top view. It's like this here. Begin a new sketch. Again, we will go for a corner rectangle. Smart dimension this. That should be 12, and the distance from here to here should be 10. Go for an extrude cut. There goes through all, and accept that. Okay. For the next part, we will go again and look for our right view and begin a sketch here. First of all, we'll start with the center line. Make sure the center line is not placed at the midpoint. And dimension this to be at a distance of 35. We will begin our sketch and we will again make a tangent arc. So place it here, begin a tangent arc. That's the symbol for tangent arc. Make sure it's an angle of 90. And we will complete our sketch. Dimension this. So the radius that we are looking for is 20, and the distance here is 20. That should fully define it. Accept that and look for an extrude cut. Isometric view again. This time this should be 9 millimeters. We can see that and accept it. Again, go for right view. The newly created extrude, we will select the face here. Begin a new sketch, and now we will only create a circle because we are trying to make a through all hole. So this should be 10 in diameter, and the distance from th this center to the side should also be 10. And the height at which it will be placed would be 35. Extrude cut, make sure it is through all and accept that. You can tell it's through all because you can see the other side, the background. So now we will go on to creating another hole at the top over here on the surface. Begin a new sketch. Once again, make a circle, dimension this. This is again a diameter of 10, which is a distance of 20 from here. And here it's Nine. Sorry, except that. Creating extrude cut that once again goes through all. We can see that in the isometric view and we will accept that. Now you would notice that our part is beginning to look a lot like this. We've got our two holes in, this cut end, this feature in, this cut and that cut. What's missing for now is this extrude here. So we will sketch that feature on our right plane, our right face, click that, begin a new sketch. So again we will use the tangent arc feature and we will complete it. Now we ensure that when you are making your part you do not create extra relationships like a midpoint. Now over here we use inference, now you would see it says coincident and a tangent, so we will accept that. And now we'll begin to dimension our part, our, sorry, our sketch. This should be a radius of 10. The angle between this edge and this edge should be 20, whereas the angle between this edge and this edge should be 45. The distance of the sketch from this side should be 15, and the overall length of this should be 40. Okay. So now this is fully defined, we can close our sketch before we begin our extrude. So accept that, features, look for an extrude cut. Again, go for an isometric view and ensure that it is through all. We can see that and we will accept it. So that's all we will do for the part in this video. I hope you got, guys got all the dimensions right. Cross them off your diagram as you progress through it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.